Jeez. Oh yeah, yeah, she was so fun. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, do you keep in touch? Yeah, yeah. Well, not like every day, but we definitely keep in touch. Um, we were actually supposed to. Oh, should we? We started, right? Yeah, we, we started. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. That's it. In that case, I should, I should switch Go. to my podcast <laughs> voice. Yeah. So initially, we um, started. <laughs> no, we trained uh, at drama school. Each other, <laughs> and we were supposed to meet up for a coffee because uh, she lives near me. Um, like a week before the whole covid thing yeah really like came into play and before people were like just before people were like you, sh you shouldn't be meeting up with with people and, and all that stuff so around that time um we spoke to each other and and, and so yeah we cancelled and we haven't rescheduled and um but yeah we sort of we, we check in on each other every now and then i suppose and she's um i think i went to see her she was in a play with robert glenister a friend of mine Oh nice. Um and so we caught up a little bit at the national um afterwards. Um and she's just she's awesome, man. Yeah. She Did you guys so meet on EastEnders? Is that how you guys met? Like? Yeah, yeah. No, we, we we met on EastEnders and we were um obviously brother and sister in the show. Um and it was sort of uh going through that craziness with someone else so experiencing yeah. it with them and having someone to be like what the fuck is going on or like <laughs> you know and having that sort of that anchor um to bounce things off of and um <clears throat> yeah she was awesome man like we had a, we had a great time together and she's a great actress and and, and she's like a, a mother now of yeah, twins twins yeah she sent me a picture of the the twins and i was just like wow they're so big like i just <laughs> assumed they'd stay like infants and yeah they are um yeah but she's, yeah. she's awesome man she's really nice um and she's doing great as well which is nice to see like it's nice to see <clears throat> good talented people just doing great like um i'm all for that like yeah have you caught in the long one she's in that isn't she have you been watching that i did yeah i started watching yeah. it on um yeah a while back yeah i haven't seen the most recent series but yeah yeah that's she's great in that as well i like it it's funny yeah and i mean what was that like i suppose like when you started on eastenders was that kind of like going from mega fame i suppose like quite quickly because i guess everyone that watched eastenders just like oh it's dean dean wicks you know was that <clears throat> a bit crazy yeah. to deal with it, it is it was very 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 strange and the world was you know without sounding too uh grand but the world was a different place like Eight, well, I was 18, so <clears throat> we're going back a while. But um, the world was a different place, man. And and I was 18, I was a baby. And it was sort of one of my, the, the biggest job that, I, that I'd had at that time. Um, and there were so many pitfalls and so many different ways that you could fuck up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's literally someone's job to keep you on the straight and narrow because they've had people come in the past who, who fell by the wayside because they fell into these traps. Um, and they are traps, man. Like they are traps. Like it was, it was, you know, my eyes were open. I was very naive. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I thought someone asking me for a, a, a photograph was just someone asking for a photograph. I mean, 90% of the time it is. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple of times where people were asking me. I remember this one time I was in, I was in Funky Buddha, on a Tuesday night. Like, what am I doing getting smashed on a Tuesday night? But you know, and the thing was, I had work the next day, so I wasn't even drinking this night. And this is that's very rare for me. But if if I've got work, I won't touch a drop because I just want to keep you know. I, um, well, that's the case now. Um, <laughs> and then basically, long story short, like, I this person waited until I blinked, or they took a few photographs and they saw this picture of me like with my eyes half closed and it was only in, in a tiny little bit yeah. of some like page seven of i don't know some bollocky celeb height but it was like oh so and so seen out absolutely smashed couldn't keep couldn't keep oh, his wow. eyes open and i was like no i remember where that was i remember what i was doing like no that's that's crap i mean that's just a, like that's sort of just where it starts. There's crazy. I had I had some quite like horrible experiences as an eighteen year old. Like, 
with kiss and tells like that was yeah. something that like i needed to to realize that you know what like people are going to be up like interested in you because of what you're doing and, and like because of you know your sort of status or, or whatever at the time and, and and yeah man there were girls that like knew our faces like, like knew who we were even if they didn't watch the show they just knew us you know there was a little there was a sort of a group of us and they and we'd sort of they'd go after us I mean I, I slept over at one girl's house and you know pissed up and just passed out you know, I had a little kiss or whatever, but like, I was so paranoid about getting done on a kiss and tell that I just, I yeah. was like, you know, we just sort of like nothing, nothing happened. Didn't, didn't, didn't sleep with her. Um, and it was in the papers. Like she put, she told a story to the papers, her sort of, you know, legs akimbo and lingerie, like, oh yeah, I slept him and this and this happened. And, and I shagged him and, and I'm like, I'm like, what? That's mad. That's, that's not true. Like we didn't, but like, I'm not going to get, like, I'm like an 18 year old guy and this is super hot chick saying she's <laughs> let with me. So like, I'm I'll not, take it. It's not, it's not <laughs> the worst, you know, thing, but then you get in trouble at work and, and, mm. and people, and you get pulled into the office, like, and they're like, listen, what are you doing, man? Like, come on, this is, this isn't good. Like, mm. no, who's going to believe you when you say like, I, I didn't sleep like, oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I suppose social, that stuff media, wasn't, yeah. social media wasn't. No, it didn't, didn't exist. Yeah. So like, I mean. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing <laughs> like back in you know when you're in I think it's a, it's a good it's a good thing um <clears throat> it's a good thing and a bad thing I suppose um when they were when you were written about um it was news like in newspapers like I remember going to my mum's house for Sunday lunch and the lunch was ruined because there was this horrible story about this you know she's like we've seen her son's sexual you know exploits mm. in the newspaper you're just like what the fuck is this this is it's horrible and you're like what do you say like yeah. you can't you can't do anything i mean it got worse during strictly a lot worse during strictly mm. that was crazy and especially with the whole thing with me and flavia um you know oh man and uh, you know i don't i haven't told this story many times but it's, it, there were some reporters. I mean, we were being followed, like followed. Oh, I remember. Like, yeah, I remember. Constantly yeah. followed, like everywhere. And um, and there were these reporters that somehow found out where my grandfather lived. Um, and this is near, like, the end of the show, like the final. And um, and they and my granddad at the time, God rest his soul, he was like eighty five, like old old Irish boy, you know. And and they said to him, we're we're school friends of Matt's, and he told us to meet him here. Um, can we come in and wait? If, and he was like, oh um, yeah, sure, I come in in his Irish accent, which I won't do. <laughs> um, and they 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 let themselves in, and they sat at my grandparents' table, and he made them a ham sandwich. He said, and he basically gave them an exclusive and showed baby photos and school photos and gave them two pages worth of our article, which, you know, if you were gonna do an exclusive and if you were gonna give the Daily Star your baby photos, you know, you'd expect to be compensated for it. Like you, yeah. if you're gonna sell out, like you're gonna get some money for it. So no one would do that for free, but, the, but it, didn't, it wasn't even about the money. Like it was just about the fact they lied to my granddad and they said that they were friends of mine. And he is innocence. Like he wouldn't. Mm. Why would he think that the two journalists would? Try? I mean, you know, it yeah. was just and a I suppose horrible, he, horrible yeah. ex experience. Like, man, I wrote their names down that day that I read that story. I wrote their names down, and I and I just I thought I'm going to keep. This is before um, Game of Thrones, but it was like a, <laughs> it was like a, it was like what's the name? You know. The, Aria, I was yeah, yeah. Of, I'm walking around and she's going to Hound, the mountain, Cersei. You know, I'm walking <laughs> around, you know, with this list of journalists. Um, man, and that was, yeah, it was just, I mean, yeah. It's such a, yeah, and I suppose your granddad was really like, horrible, man. Yeah, like the granddad. He was a bit embarrassed by it, but he, yeah. I was like, this man, don't worry. Like, it's not a big deal. Just forget about it. And he was like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a horrible thing. And, and, and just being on the front page of a newspaper, it's just a bizarre thing. You can't, 
you know, to young people coming into the sort of industry, you can't, yeah. what can you, you can't prepare for that. Yeah. You know, and it's horrible in a lot of ways. And it's cool in a lot of other ways, you know, I mean, you get Nando send you a black card and you've got <laughs> like you and five friends can eat yeah. as much as you want, as many times as you want. It's called a, it's called nice. a high five card back in the day. <laughs> And I'm just like a young guy, like 19, 20 years old. And, and I'm in the pub, like I've already had my Nando's, my free Nando's, you know, and then my, my mate's like, I'm going to go next door and get some, some food. The pub's next door to Nando's. I'm like, oh, listen, mate, take the card. And I'm like, like the card's just getting handed around this pub to people I don't even know. And they're just going in and eating and, and, and coming out. <laughs> yeah. And then they took the card off me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Wait, yeah. Wait. <laughs> did there's, you have, there's good points and there's yeah. bad points. Did you ever have to deal with like social media trolls or wasn't it too bad? Because I guess EastEnders was kind of a bit pre that for I, you. So I, I kind of hit at 18 this yeah. before that. I did EastEnders. I did Strictly. I did like three, four, year, four years of hustle before Twitter was invented. Yeah, and on the and on the last year, the only reason that I even have a Twitter account, or well, not the only reason, I mean, the person that that set me up um, was Adrian Lester, and he <laughs> was he was tweeting, and I was like, "Dude, what are you doing?" And he's like on Twitter. I'm like, "Ah, I never like is it good? Like, should I make one?" He's like, "Yeah, just sign up and see how it goes." I mean, obviously now it's huge, and you can't imagine someone not having a. Mm -hmm. A social media um, profile but yeah i missed all of that stuff so during strictly i didn't have to deal with that and first time during EastEnders, and, yeah and then when i went back to eastenders um like 10 i think oh my god not even, i don't know how long ago i went back there but um but yeah obviously i had i had a, a profile instagram and twitter and that stuff yeah. and then obviously during the the heaviest storylines um there was a few a few sort of um people tried to to have a little dig you know just be like just mm. leave the word like rapist underneath a, right. a photo of, of you yeah, and yeah. the dog but nothing major maybe like a dozen people yeah. yeah like a dozen comments every now and like someone would inbox you going oh you, you scumbag and it's nothing yeah. nothing nothing no one in the street said anything like nothing yeah. there was no negative feedback from that storyline at all which was something i was worried about yeah um, it's crazy isn't it? that you know, some people your face you know, on extenders like you're on tv so regular and you and this you you know the people just associate the character and the, and, the, and the actor like they merge those lines i had someone say the other day like oh, sorry, i should turn this up. i had someone say the other day like oh yeah what about um and they meant to say I know what they meant. They meant Ross and Steve. And they were like, oh, yeah, and, and Phil and Grant. And I'm like, they, like, they just can't. I mean, they, they, I mean, those characters are iconic, so you can sort yeah. of forgive people for merging it. But um, but EastEnders has been on TV so much um, and people associating you with your character did make me hesitant to sort of undertake that that heavy, heavy storyline. Yeah. yeah. But how was it? I mean, what was your sort of initial reaction, I suppose, when you sort of got pitched up? storyline with linda like was it was you were you oh. like do you like n no straight was, or, the, you know, or... man i got pulled into the not pulled in but i got asked for a meeting um with the um the sort of the head the showrunner if you will um which is dominic treble collins at the time um who's a great guy like you know he he sort of specifically reached out to me when he wanted me to come back and he brought me back himself and um and so he, I went into his office and we had the meeting and, then, and he was like, listen, I've got this idea. It's a really, really fucking important story. So just hear me out. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I was just like, what is this going to be like? Mm -hmm. And when he said it, obviously my initial reaction was no, no way. Like, uh, uh, I, I, like, because it's such a repulsive thing that you mm -hmm. think like, what? And also you associate your character, you know, you know, it feels like an extension of, of, of you um, because you, it's not like you get a film script and you get to dissect it and make your decisions um, and, and have it as a beginning and a middle and an end and this set standalone piece of work. It's never ending, like it's evolving, like soaps you get sent six pages in, in, in the morning that have all been rewritten and everything's changed. And so your decisions that you make as an actor for me um become impulsive because you don't like on the big stuff and the heavy stuff that you get in in advance yeah you can make you know some sort of 
things, but a lot of the time that you're filming so much and there's so much you're going through that it just sort of has to be instinctive because, mm -hmm. you know, you put yourself in that character and then you just try and like improvise or, or not, you know, the, the reactions and those decisions. And so when they did suggest that, my initial reaction was like, no, like, oh, no, man, like, I don't want to. I don't want him. And then we spoke about it more and he started giving me the stats about the, how low the conviction rate is, you know, for rapes and what the victims don't do initially um, that ends up, you know, they, because they, you know, you don't think to, you know, the first thing, I mean, God, who knows what goes through your head, but you have to sort of act fast. And a lot of people don't, they sort of, I think they, they leave it. And then that ends up being the thing that stops the conviction mm. because of the DNA test or because of, you know, the actual crux of the, of the thing. And so there was this whole thing that, the, that and we worked with, um, with a lot of the, the, the rape charities and, and organizations and, and to get the, to make the story as true as possible. But, um, but yeah, I mean, once we spoke about it and, and, and I realized how important it was, like, who am I to, to be selfish enough to be like, oh, well, I don't really want to be associated with that. And, you know, so no, it's a bigger, it's a bigger picture, man, you know, and, and, you know, it was an important story to tell and like, you know, it needed to be, the, the story was, was, was strong, man, and it needed to be told. And I think it was handled really well and everyone that was involved in it was awesome. And um, uh, Linda, um, you know, she was great, man. And, you know, she was, um, Linda, Kelly. You, you said, you said, Linda, <laughs> I said, Kelly, Linda Kelly, Bright. Yeah. yeah uh, Kelly was, was incredible. She's an incredible actress and she's a lovely person. And yeah, man, it was really good working with her. And, yeah. I mean, I suppose looking back on it and reflecting in terms of the, the bigger picture as well, like it was making a decision that, that it sort of stops you, your character going back to the show yeah not not 100 percent stops you like you know there's, there's always a possibility i mean they bring people you can bring someone back from the dead you can bring you know an, a, an unconvicted rapist back um but i don't know whether subconsciously that was me going well that's gonna set my my time definitely and be a it's sort of it's gonna define that character and 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 um and yeah, because I was I was sort of um, thinking about just being there for twelve months and, and twelve months, and then go back to doing what I was doing and, and try and do some other bits. And I was always very paranoid about getting like stuck somewhere and all of that caper. Um, and then you know we ended up because of that story, I extended for another twelve months, and, and so I did two years there. I think altogether I've been on the show for like four years. Two, two at 18 years old and two later on, which <laughs> considering like, that's the thing that you're sort of known for is, is nuts. Like, cause yeah. I've not actually been there that many times, like that, that, that longer period is, yeah, it's strange. When people yeah. say, oh no, you've been there like 10, 10 years. Like, no, man, I was there like four years. Yeah. And do you get that time for a it? lot? Do you still get like Dean, you know, people saying Dino, Dean in the, you know, people clock, yeah, or not too much? No, man. No? No. I don't, I mean, listen, man, I've not been on TV for like five years, so mm -hmm. no one's really, no one's really saying much to me these days. <laughs> Are you the guy that, you look like a, a fat version of the guy that used to be on, no, no I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you get sort of like a second glance, but no, um, obviously when you're on the show, people, yeah, you're, you're very recognisable, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I bumped into Danny, um, <laughs> I bumped into Danny, it feels just referring to him in his with his first name just doesn't feel right. I feel like he needs to be referred to in the first and second name, like Danny Dyer. You have to say Danny Dyer. Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's yeah. like the opposite of Prince. I have to sort of <laughs> I bumped into Danny yeah. Dyer at this petrol station in Chiswick. Um and he was I was waiting to pay for petrol and I heard this voice ordering um a sausage roll. We wasn't ordering a sausage roll. He was trying to explain <laughs> to the the girl behind the counter the difference between a sausage bap and a sausage roll. <laughs> and I'm like, I instantly recognised his voice. 
and the fact that he's even having that conversation, you know, there's a very, very limited pool of people that would have a conversation like that. Um, <laughs> and I was like, all right, mate. And we had a little hug. But the reason I'm saying this is that just me and him standing in a public space, like a petrol station with a couple of sausage rolls, like you do just feel people go, yeah. what the, like, what yeah. have I walked into? Like this yeah. is seeing seeing two people from the same show, like in <laughs> the looking, real world. Is looking around like, where are the cameras? Like, they feel literally, <laughs> literally too much for people to handle. Their brains sort of imploded. Yeah. Um, yeah. Funny. Yeah. I mean, I suppose like you he said. He got a like, sausage roll, by the way, in the end. He got his he, sausage roll. Yeah, it was a sausage roll, not the bat. Yeah, it was a roll, <laughs> not a bat. Big difference. Massive. Yeah. <laughs> and I suppose like I is there a route do you think back for Dean and EastEnders well, like you say it's it's very difficult I suppose for him how yeah, it's tough would he go back I mean, there's no family there right at the minute is there sure what Shirley I suppose is I, I, I'm not sure at the yeah, moment what's what's going on sure. um well I mean I don't, I don't know like it would be up for the writers to, to work that stuff <laughs> I don't know yeah. um, you know like everyone always says you never sort of close the door and um never say never who knows who knows man. i yeah. think that you can get around anything and i think sometimes i mean you can think like it could be a good thing because he never was convicted mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that didn't always sit like well with me like i wanted him to sort of be punished for that yeah um and i think they were reflecting the reality of the situation which is that like i think the majority of, of people that think that are, aren't convicted yeah no, i think it's one in six this yeah. number that just sort of mm -hmm. brings to my head mm -hmm. which is oh, yeah, it's mad like yeah do you, you think you don't want to give a story across like if it's one in six you don't want to show that one you want to show the other five because that's what's happening day in day out yeah yeah so i think he does need to atone for what, what he did and um and admit it to himself and yeah there's a, there's a story there i mean but how do you go back to normal life mm -hmm. which sort of these senders has to be after that like what could you you could come back for like a dozen episodes or six episodes but you couldn't do like a, i mean how do you go from that to yeah dipping in the mini mart to pick up some milk and yeah you know, and a laugh and a joke yeah. no no there's none of that so i suppose yeah, it's tough. What was that? Yeah, so yeah, it's, you, yeah, a difficult one. Do you think when you were playing D Dean throughout that storyline, do you think he was aware straight off the bat of what he had done, or did it take a bit of you know a while to sort of ex you know accept what he had done with Linda, or do you think he was always aware that he did rape, rape or did he think there was some? No. So, so the 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 whole thing was that he was playing in his head. Yeah. That um, well, he was playing. That I was, but I was playing. Hmm. That he that he um convince himself that he hadn't done anything wrong mm -hmm. um because there were so many i guess it's a soap there's so many they want to they need to drip feed certain looks and moments and they need to sort of prolong the revelation and etc mm -hmm. and etc and the only way to feasibly do that like is for the character to think he hasn't done anything wrong because if he knows that he's done that and still goes to the family dinners yeah. and you know and goes for a drink in her pub and is like hey how you doing acting like nothing's wrong then he's a like he's a psychopath mm -hmm. and if he's a psychopath that's a whole different story yeah. and that's a whole different you know and they and that's not the case so you know these are the sort of discussions that you have with people upstairs and the writers and everything you know you, you, you know you make your decisions and you make your choices and, and so he didn't think he'd done anything wrong. why he didn't think that i mean it's so long ago i don't remember why we saw <laughs> but how i justified that but like you know, the type of person that would do such a such a heinous thing is is sort of twisted and, and their minds a bit fucked up. So yeah. a bit fucked up, very fucked up anyway. So you know, I'm sure they can convince themselves anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, obviously we're living in a bit of a fucked up time at the minute. I mean, how, how have you been do, doing over? I suppose this last year. Well, it's been a year now, hasn't it? This last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, almost exactly a year, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm okay, man. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Like there's a lot of people in a worse position than me. Um, so you've got to be careful about what you moan and moan about, you know. Yeah. I mean, what am I gonna, what am I gonna complain about? I have a, I have a good life, man. I'm very grateful for my life. Um, I don't sound it. I'm very grateful for my life. <laughs> no, I am very, I'm very, um, in a good place, man. Like, 
just like mentally and, and like physically um, just just like content just very content mm -hmm. very chilled like there's a bunch of things that I wish I had <laughs> there's also a bunch of things that I do have that other people don't have that kind of mentality and just sort of living in the moment and being present and just being like you know what life's good man like yeah life's good just be thankful for it and I think as an actor you uh sometimes unless you're very lucky and very successful um but the majority of actors go through patches of, of of tons of work and then no work and then you know it's on and off and you're up and down and you say you're resting and and you know a lot of the majority you know um take up a second job or we'll get a job in a bar you know and that's the whole you know, hollywood thing of you know those actors working um as waitresses and then they get discovered and the famous story of story of like Idris Elba working in like a construction site in New York mm -hmm. when he got the part for the Y and that's beautiful it's a great it's a great story and you've got other people that that crack it um and that go back to that life which there's nothing wrong with like despite what the Daily Mail will put in their papers there's nothing wrong with someone being on the television and then going work, working in the bar the next day like fuck who are you to point the finger to say you can't work like a normal a normal job like what the fuck's that about that's crazy but for me like I made some investments and, and some sort of secondary businesses and, and some other things that aren't acting related um, that I sort of got involved in. Um, and like I do a lot of voice work, like voiceovers yeah, um, for like Discovery Channel and you know, Sony or Hugo Boss or whatever, like adverts, you know. So it's pretty fun. It's like a, it's a real bread and butter job for, for actors. Like yeah voice work and you just and once you start doing them you just you you look you see so many very very famous people's voices mm -hmm. without their name ever being associated with the product but you just recognize their voice in your ear you is very finely tuned to people's voice and you know and you, yeah yeah so i think a lot a lot a lot of actors do that the voice work um and it's cool because you don't have to learn the lines you know you can just just walk up with a piece of paper, like Toast of London, and just yes. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. I've heard someone mentioned to me. Um, we watched. I watched an advert not long ago. Someone said, "Oh, that's that's Matt Lucas. That's his voice, Matt Lucas." I was like, "Is it?" Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. I watched Listener again. Oh yeah, that is Matt Lucas's voice. And you don't you don't re recognize it until um yeah. someone points it out sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it was Cersei. Like I can't remember her name. Lena, Lena, Lena Headley, Cersei Lannister. Oh yeah, yeah. I know what you mean voice of Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Oh, wow. She's got a great voice as well. She's really good. Yeah. So what, have you been watching any sort of TV shows and stuff over the last year, Netflix and out and stuff? Anything that's really cool? I mean, did you watch Tiger yeah, King, like, for example? Like everyone else. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I've been watching everything. Yeah. Um, um, Tiger King, of course. <laughs> that's crazy. Crazy. My, my missus got me some, uh, some jungle-themed balloons for my birthday because it was May 1st, like during the first lockdown, obviously. Um, yeah, so we had a bit of a Tiger King themed birthday um really yeah a crazy 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 show netflix did some amazing things like yeah. some of the stuff they make is great and then at the same time you've got that that hotel cecil thing which they could probably could have summed up in like half an hour <laughs> and so dragging it out for five hours and wasting my life um yeah but they're making some great stuff man mm -hmm. some great stuff on there and there's, yeah. i'm going back and watching old stuff and um like sopranos and i just started watching lost which i've never seen I've not seen Lost yet. I've not no, seen. No, you see Lost. Not everyone's yeah. seen it. It's kind of but, slow in spots, but I've got nothing but time on my hands, and it's got six seasons. And when I see six seasons, I haven't seen it. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna jump in on that. Yeah. Um, so I'm on season three, and uh, it's nuts. Yeah, you haven't seen it, so you can't ruin it for me. But I'm hesitant to put out there on in the world that to tell people that I'm watching Lost for the first time because I know someone's right, just yeah. gonna absolutely kill it for me. There'll always be that one person on Twitter that's like, oh, There's always that one. Really? Yes. Okay, let me. <laughs> let me yeah, it's always that. Yeah, let me just ruin your life. And that is what Twitter is like, isn't it? It's just yeah, yeah. A small yeah. group of people <laughs> just trying to ruin everyone else's day. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just almost like it, I think what it is, it's people that have had a bad day at work, whatever it is, and then they see who. I don't think they target anyone. I think they just see someone tweet something and think. Mm. I'm gonna bring you down now. So how I'm maybe they've had a maybe they've had a bad day. Yeah, maybe they're just yeah. maybe they're just shit people. Like who knows? Yeah, I guess like, so. There's a lot of very nasty people, very horrible people out there, and a lot of bitter people. You know, you just sort of have to. Oh, I don't know, man. You just gotta ignore it. 
it's just yeah. absolutely weird. and i think people are different so different the way that they um can type something but where they would never say yeah. that those those yeah. words out loud no. ever but they would type the most hideous things yeah you know and you see the, the footballers mm -hmm. get this oh yeah abuse, like yeah yeah man the stuff that they put on these 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 guys and it's similar to them i'm an arsenal fan and like there was reports of, of other arsenal fans giving racial abuse to william who don't get me wrong he's been dog shit since he joined the club but he doesn't deserve any sort of abuse directed at him yeah. like you can you can sit in your living room with with, the, with well not with a friend but you know you can say to a friend like this guy is so shit. Why are we giving him three hundred thousand pounds a week? He's awful. <laughs> yeah. But you don't start the racist abuse on as an Arsenal fan to an Arsenal player. Even even if even an Arsenal fan to a Tottenham player, I would never dream of mm -hmm. of even you know saying the words "you're shit." I wouldn't even say anything because mm -hmm. it's just horrible. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's just disgusting. I mean, the abuse they get, and then Marcus yeah. Rashford doing what he's doing. And people still want to jump on the, yeah. the dude's back, like, oh mm. my god! Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a, crazy. I, I, they need to do more. They just like, you, you, you just need to find these people, man, and just and like hand out like, I don't know, not, hand out prisons. Like it's a, like, they need to, they need to do more to, to find these these people. Man. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a Newcastle fan, so obviously, I mean, never mind. Oh but. yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. obviously. You know, we have Steve Bruce as a manager, and you know, I'm not a fan of Steve Bruce as a manager, but you know, people are Twitter. Alex Bruce has Twitter. You never Steve wish harm. You know, I know, his, yeah, yeah, and on his Alex, children or anything. Oh well, no, like, yeah, disgusted exactly. like they they do. And Alex Alex Bruce put a tweet out, and Newcastle fans were commenting on this tweet that had nothing to do with Newcastle. Hope your dad gets COVID. We might win again. You know, and stuff like that. And it's just oh, like, right. are you kidding me? Like. This is crazy. And Steve Bruce is a Geordie. You know, he does love the club. He, you know, he might not be able to do the, you know, he might be past his best prime manager. Mm -hmm. But to say like... Yeah, but this, yeah it is what it is, man. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, saying that, William has turned it around the last couple of games and he's actually been smashing it. So, yeah. he got man of the match the other day. So, still, it's not the point, man. It's, it's this whole kind of... Um, this whole mentality that, that, you know, and it stems from, from like, Trump. That, oh, whole, yeah. that whole thing, say say whatever the fuck you want, like no mm -hmm. one's going to stop me. And not just Trump, you know, the B word as well, like Brexit. Come mm -hmm. on, man, if you're going to lie and get away with it once, it, you're condoning it and you're going to do it again. Like, mm -hmm. And we're just, without getting too depressing, we are in a really like strange place as a species or mm -hmm. whatever, like yeah. where you can just say complete falsehoods and no one will hold you accountable mm -hmm. is bonkers yeah and these are the people that are in charge like what like mm -hmm. like like it was on the side of a fucking bus why is no one doing something about it find the per like it, you know if you wanted to if you were motivated to you would find the person responsible and and that and I don't know, give that person, make sure they never work in fucking politics again. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like Grenfell, like there's a paper trail of people that signed off on those buildings. There's a single person, you know, or an organization responsible for that. Find them, mm -hmm. drag them into court and then sentence them for manslaughter because they killed people. Yeah. You know, even if that's someone that signed it off, in a government position or the council planning authority or building regulations or what, whatever, like a mistake was made, it, it, you know, and I'm just, I know shit, like I know nothing. I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking actor, man, you know, but I know enough to know that there's someone responsible for this shit mm -hmm. and they're not being held to accountability. They're not being held accountable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, you know, if it was a building full of, of millionaires, you know, in, 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 in Kensington that burnt down or man, they'd have found them already, but it wasn't, it was, it was, it was a building full of poor people and no one gives a fuck.
Yeah. Like you, you'll tweet it and they'll tweet it and they'll retweet it and they'll, yeah, like love to Grenfell and all that. And then they'll, 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 you know, use it to their advantage that like people will jump on bandwagons. But no one's actually doing shit about it. No. Like, I'm not doing shit about it. I'm not, I'm not outside the courtroom protesting. Like you just scroll past shit. Like daily, I say, like, this is pretty fucking depressing, but like daily, but I follow these these crime accounts on Twitter and they just report, you know, crime in, in London or like in my area. And it's like daily, I'm seeing kids stabbed. I'm seeing 13 and 14 year old boys that I'm thinking of in particular met up with their friend in, in Westfields and they took him around the back of Westfields and they stabbed him. And he was like 14 and now he's dead and, and they've got like 20 years, okay. But then daily I'm going past people, young men that are stabbed to death. And all we do is either ignore it or scroll past it. Like, mm-hmm. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. People just like, put I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, well, it, no one gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if I said to you, like, oh, if I showed you a picture of this dead boy, you'd be like, oh, it's pretty sad. Yeah. But no one's doing anything about it. I mean, you can blame the conservatives or Labour or Sadiq Khan or Boris or it doesn't make a difference what their name is, what party they're from. It just feels like politicians don't do a fucking thing. And it doesn't matter what brand you buy. It's the same shit. Mm-hmm. You just package it differently. Yeah, it's it's know. it's a strange, it's, it's a strange thing how fucking deep there, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, you, you, we do sometimes, but I mean, it's. I, I mean, do you think with with kids as well that like you know doing those things and, and you know be getting involved in knife man, crime? I've got, I mean, I've got, what is man, the I've root got, of it? I've got, I could go for days on this, man. Yeah, I've I mean, well, what is the root? I mean, I'm going to give you the. I'm going to give you the the sort of the highlight reel on, on what I think of this. Yeah. Okay, and 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 I'm going to give you one word. Okay, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay, Instagram. Instagram. Man, and I'm I'm on Instagram and sometimes I post like try and just say to people like this, you know, this is a highlight reel. Instagram is a, is a is a highlight reel of your life. And not just Instagram, but life in general. There's this mentality with young people or the generation below me, with my generation, with it maybe even the generation above me, to be honest. But there's this mentality of 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 like um the world owes me a living. Like everyone wants to be a footballer. Everyone wants a, a, a Rolex a, or a Lamborghini and a massive house because you see it and you want it, right? Mm. And that's the way we're conditioned to buy things, to have an iPhone 12 Pro instead of an iPhone 6. An iPhone 6 is fine, you know, whatever. Like you want more and more and more and you want to spend more and you want, you want to achieve more so you can show it off to other people and you want to, you want to have more. When back in the day, I mean, don't get me wrong, there were still like problems back in the day, but... But the whole 2.4 children thing, where if you had a Ford Cortina outside and a two up, two down, a boy and a girl, you'd cracked it. You'd absolutely smashed it. You'd, 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 you'd completed life, that was it. You would only cover your neighbor who was literally physically next to you. Maybe because you, the internet didn't exist and you couldn't see the whole world. You couldn't, mm-hmm. see, you couldn't see the riches that other people had or the, the, other, the, the things that other people had. But, but now it's like, you've just got young kids, like. 15 years old that are spending 500 pound on a pair of trainers of course they're not going to be happy working in asda yeah because it's not going to sustain the lifestyle that they see on on instagram or on facebook or in tv and film and so people have pushed to push the crime people have yeah. pushed to crime more and, and 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 not being able to achieve that lifestyle that you think you're owed makes you angry it makes you you know and, and so you've got then you split off into the whole gangs thing and where you were born, you know, obviously if you were a, you know, a, a privately educated rich kid, you know, you're not gonna have these issues. So it is the, is, is the younger, um, you know, BAME communities that are, are, are suffering the most from, from this, this horrific, like, I don't even think, I'm not even smart enough to come up with the Russell Brand phrased words to tell you how disgusting, like how many children are dying every day is. But man, it just makes my stomach turn just like, because you want to do something, but what the fuck? Like, yeah. I just want to say to people, like, it doesn't matter. Like, trust me, I have anything I, like, I want. I've had money go through my hands, like hundreds of thousands of pounds over my lifetime. 
and I've been on film sets working and been the most depressed I've ever been in my life. But I was just like so depressed and I just didn't want to do anything. And I just felt like awful about myself. I just felt shit. And I had like 200 grand in the bank, like, and then the other times I've been like refurbing a house with a buddy of mine, like painting walls, just dressed in absolute, like covered in paint and, and just like eating a packet of chips like out of the paper and been the happiest I've ever been in my life. Yeah. But just because of the fact that I was working on someone's house, like, like I just felt good because I, after having a lot and having a lot taken away from me that I just sort of have learned, been forced to learn how to deal with the loss of that really and realizing that, you know what, it's not that important. Like, mm -hmm. like I promise you, man, it's not that important. Like having, having all this shit, like, yeah. honestly. It's comparing it, isn't it? Some of the unhappiest people I know have a, a, a ton of money. Yeah. and have everything they want and after you've bought it after you've got the rolex and the porsche you know like i promise you there's not this it doesn't release this sense of joy like it doesn't release you know it you get mm. endorphins released yeah that in that moment when you drop like 10 grand on a watch you feel like whoa, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah all right and then yeah a couple of years later, you're looking at the watch, you're like, oh, I'm going to do a gold version of that, man. You like the gold version? Like, yeah. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter, man. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, mm. And I know that, ironically enough, the people that need to hear this aren't even going to be listening to this podcast, man. And, like, I would love to be in a position where I could actually speak to, if anything I say and it even resonates with anyone or even makes any sense, you know, this could, it could all be complete shit. I'm not qualified to, to speak. It's just my personal opinion, you mm. know from what I see and like, you know, there's obviously a plethora of fucking moving parts yeah. that make someone, mm -hmm. you know, to make that decision to stab someone else to death. Man. But I think that that plays some part in it at some point of, yeah. of, of people just not being happy with a normal life. Yeah, well, that's what Instagram does, isn't it? Everyone's comparing themselves to everyone else. And it's like you say, back in the day, you didn't, you know, you had, had MySpace, where MySpace, you just had your, your school friends on there, whatever. But now Facebook and Instagram. It's the people you knew. It's, yeah, it's right? so open and to they were, everyone. You see whoever. You know, yeah. And yeah. they you hang around with. Yeah. You're usually in the same sort of social position. Circle, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas Instagram, I suppose, you're, you're scrolling past, you know, McGregor or Drake, who's wearing like 1.5 million on their wrists, and they're thinking, "Shit, my life didn't turn out that good." Mm -hmm. But it did. Like, who, who's to say that your life is worth any less, or you've done any better or any worse than someone just because they can go and drop 200 grand on a watch? Yeah, oh, that's just like such a small percentage of people that you, that the 99% are trying to. You know, or, or or holding, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. these people, yeah, yeah, are, okay, yeah. uh, it's not normal. These lives aren't normal. It's not normal to be that wealthy or to, you know. I mean, they're great. Some of these people, listen, man. Some of these people deserve it, of course. They're artists or sports stars, and they're the best in the world at what they do, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. But you shouldn't be need to compare. Like I don't personally feel like a young person should try and compare themselves to someone that's in this elite category of people mm -hmm. and, and, and you know listen, the companies exploit that they know that you want to be like them and to be like them okay you're not going to be able to go out and buy the Lamborghini but you can buy the trainers that he makes mm -hmm. or the jumper that he endorses and you can look like him or you can smell like David Beckham you know <laughs> or you can wear the same lip gloss as Katy Perry or what you know and that's where endorsements come from. And that's, you know, because, and that's people making millions and millions more Amazing. off of mm -hmm. aura fans wanting to be like them. Yeah. Am I, like, I feel like I'm, I've had too much coffee. <laughs> no, 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 no. I get, you get what you're saying, man. I mean, it's it makes sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because I don't speak, like, I don't speak about this stuff too often. Yeah. Like, it just sits in my head. But no, it's um, it's like everyone wants to be famous rather than talented, don't they? It's like you'd yes. rather people want to play. Yes. Ra ra everyone wants. To, yeah. If you asked a teenager, would you rather 
be able to play the piano exceptionally well? Or would you rather yeah. have a million followers on Instagram? They're saying, I want to have a million followers on Instagram because yeah. people will be paying attention to what I'm doing. Yeah. And rather than having this incredible talent of practicing something to get really good at it, yeah. they'd rather just exactly. have that instant. See, and they don't practice. see that practice. They don't see, you know, and I'm going to use myself as an example, but if you look at the limited amount of success that I had, like you, you don't see like my mum taking me to, to drama classes at like eight and nine and her going without so that I could have the opportunity to exceed yeah. or like you know like her writing letters to try and get me a scholarship to go to Sylvia Young's because we didn't have the money to pay for that school yeah. and I wouldn't be where I am or, or, or where I have been without being at that school because one thing leads to another and that's where you get your training from like you don't see that like she was working two jobs, man. She was going out mini cabin at night while we were asleep sometimes, just so she could pay the bills, to, 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 so we could have, so I could have a, a, a fucking private lesson to help me get the audition that ended up, you know, setting my whole life off. Like you don't see the work and the struggle. You, people only just see the success. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's no, absolutely yeah i mean is there people that you do follow on social media that do sort of inspire you like for me the rock i love following the rock because the oh, i don't just... like the rock you don't like the rock no, no. Uh, i mean here's someone that no, just because i just like why do you why do you like him i, I like it because i like his sort of like you know get out there go for it and you know he's open he's, he's like the macho yeah, man yeah. in man in the world and he has opened up about he had mental you know he had problems with mental yeah. health as well and i think okay well if people that sort of talk about toxic masculinity can hear the rock okay say, yeah yeah i take that back you know, actually i shouldn't say i don't like the rock because yeah. he does stand for a lot of good stuff i'm just saying i mean as, I, as an actor he's not the best but i think he's he's, <laughs> um, he's fucking awful yeah, <laughs> but he's yeah, but, but i like his like sort of highest messages. grossing actor yeah, yeah. of all time but yeah. yeah sometimes i find his his posts like a little bit like hardest worker in the room shit like don't get me wrong okay like, yeah he, it's he like a hard like yeah. yeah but that sort of mentality like I don't know I don't know like maybe it's the it's the opportunity like the opportunity I don't know it just feels like it's the self the self oh listen that's what Instagram is. Brand, it's, it's me yeah, me yeah. me but he's so like yeah and I just yeah. like you know also I've got a thing about this like this whole steroid thing oh yeah he's like, he's yeah I, I just <laughs> that's not natural <laughs> come on like and you see like the the Marvel superheroes, you know, a lot of people talk about, rightly so, about this unattainable image that young girls are given. But like teenage boys, like <laughs> looking at these guys that whose bodies you can't get without some sort of steroid or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. and, and and even if you even if you take the smallest amount of steroids, like. Again, it's about like what's achievable and what's realistic and behind the scenes. Like once you hit it with Marvel in America, you, you, your dietitian, your personal chef, the gym that follows you around wherever you go, you know, the, the, the staff that you're given by a movie studio, you know, to look that way. And then just be like, ah, oh, nothing, you know, just, just how I look, man. You know, I've just always had a six pack, and you know, <laughs> I, I, no, it's a fucking. That's like someone's life who's tried to make you look like that. Uh, there's people I know, like who have done steroids. Who are, I know for a fact have done steroids. They have like made it. They can live in off of, off of like, off of like health books. You know, and like how look like, like me. Yeah, you know, eat your greens. No, fuck off, man. Like I know you've been injecting. Like yeah know the person that sold you the stuff like what but they're just selling it to a bunch of young kids like you want to look like me you know eat, yeah. eat this and eat that and buy my book and shut the fuck up man you're yeah. injecting clem in your ass like please yeah no yeah it's very... not healthy man it's not healthy it's no. not healthy man it's like we live in such an unhealthy like i mean healthy as in like your mind oh yeah it's okay to have a bit of a belly man compared yeah. to the Leonardo DiCaprio bad bod like that's okay yeah it's Especially also okay if you if you like <laughs> if you want to hit hit the streets and run and cycle like and lose weight that's good for you, good for you man that's great too like i work out a lot i can work out i mean gyms are closed now but i'm working out at home yeah 
We really like, I don't look like Chris Hemsworth. Like, <laughs> I take my shirt, my shirt off, and I just look like such a normal, normal guy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've tried it, man. I've tried it. I've had PTs. Like, oh, man, I'd love to look like that. I'd love to be that ripped. I would love to be that ripped. Just could never do it. I just could never do it. Yeah. Well, when you were, were you, you sort of, I guess, your fitness, when you're doing Strictly, was that, you know, pretty intense? No, that wasn't my, no, I lost a lot of weight, man. I lost like two stone doing Strictly. I ended up, I was wearing, I weighed like nine, eight and a half, nine stone. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. I looked like, oh, I had to, yeah, it was bizarre. My head looked too big for my body. Man, the yeah. music stopped playing. I hate when the music stops playing. <laughs> Alexa, resume, no, stop. Stop. Don't do anything. No, because then she's going to play something. And I have to have music on, like... Yeah, that's cool. Throughout you, the day. Like, like, a play, throughout that. like a playlist you got on, or like... There's, no, music. like anything. I don't care. Like, it's just got to be on. You know, after we've done a bit of Nick Ferrari and we've done a little bit of James O'Brien. Oh, nice. Then we just put some tunes on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the healthiest I've been, I don't know what the healthiest I've been was, man. Like, I've worked out, like, bulked up, did that whole thing of, like, pressing the 50 kgs on my buddy mitch and my buddy <laughs> yeah. john like big boys pressing those big weights and then i went on a holiday and i just stood on the beach and i just looked fat like and there's no i always say to my buddies when i'm worried, like i always say there's no sign above your head when you're on the beach that that, that says how much you pressed or how much you lift in the gym <laughs> no. just about physically what you look to the eye you yeah. know yeah so yeah i went through that phase of, of bulking up and trying to cut down and waking up at nine o'clock and eating steak and uh, five times a day and all that stuff yeah yeah I'm just a bit more like I work out like I don't injure myself anymore I just work out like I work out hard but like you know mm -hmm. just do what I can like when you can like I got a bike I used to hate cyclists I used to just I used to just think cyclists were the worst when I'm driving I hate them yeah but then yeah and but then, then I got a bike and I'm like <laughs> you know what you guys are are okay. You're you're insane for even being on the roads, and it's the people in the cars that are the fucking assholes. Yeah, I think we know that. My mind's been opened, man. I've got so much more respect for cyclists now. I am one. Yeah, it's because it's scary, man. Like being on that road, indicating mm -hmm. with one one hand, like fucking. <laughs> then the Amazon drivers like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, can't you see I'm cycling here? Damn it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you spoke about, um, you know, going through a bit of a time where you're a bit depressed. Like, what sort of time was that for you? Was that like sort of coming out strictly when you had all that plaf plaf? No, or, no? No. no, I mean, it's, I suppose um, I don't want to get like too specific about it because I don't fine. want anyone to think um, that it was like their fault or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I'd say like, it, it's sort of the reason why I'm not, I'm, I'm, I think it's partly sort of the reason why I'm not, why I took a step back from the industry and um, like on the last job I did, it was pretty bad and I was just really depressed and I just felt like what I was creating wasn't very good and the performances weren't great and, um, and I wanted to be better and I wanted to spend longer on it and I wasn't really vibing with the director or whoever else and just made me really sad because it's like what I devoted my life to was this mm. and just didn't feel like I was that good at it <laughs> like, and it just made me pretty depressed like no I didn't you know didn't do anything drastic I just felt really shitty about it and I just felt like why would I carry on doing something that makes me unhappy so I just took some time out and I said to my agent like you know what I'm gonna refurb my house I'm gonna take a year off I don't want to do anything like kind of just like if something comes up, I'll like audition for it. Well, obviously, I'm not that fucking arrogant. If it's a great project, yeah, of course. But I just wasn't actively trying that hard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I sort of leveled out and I was like, I want to get back to work and I want to start. You know, I sort of wore off and I sort of got the hunger back again. I went to Los Angeles and I studied there for a couple of months um, with some like awesome, awesome people. Like, and people in my class are popping off now and they're on Netflix and they're doing great and it's nice to see, man. Um, but they're all, they're all American. I was like the only English guy. Um, and then, yeah, I got that hunger bag and I started auditioning again. Um, 
and then like another year went by where I didn't book a job and I was just like sort of out of my control there's nothing I can do if I'm, I mean if I'm trying my best for these auditions and if I'm not getting them fine like mm-hmm. okay uh, and then I thought it was like oh this must be my agent's fault like because I'm not getting I'm not even not that I'm not getting the auditions like I'm not there's just no auditions to go for like mm-hmm. we're doing six months no auditions like the fuck it must be their fault and so I changed the agents and I went with this sort of like high flying big time agent that was don't even know how I got them to take me on um and uh, you know I, the projects they were sending me for were like awesome um incredible stuff but I wasn't booking the gigs and wasn't getting it wasn't getting the jobs and a year went by where I didn't book with them and they were sort of so big that they were like listen you haven't made us any money in a year you know get the fuck out of here we dropped mm-hmm. um and I had always had a great relationship with my um original agent you see her at united and she like when when i had the conversation with her when i was leaving her i was like listen you know this is like i just this isn't anything personal like you're fucking amazing i just don't feel like i have another i don't feel like i can do anything i don't know what i can do like i can't do anything apart from change agents that's it or i don't know i don't know there's nothing i can do and so i was she was like okay i get it and she was like if you ever want to come back come back and so when it didn't work out with these other guys um I just called her up and I was like, can I come in? And I sat down, I had a talk with her and she was like, I was like, can I come back please? Because <laughs> these, these fancy agents had me for a year and I didn't do anything and, and they sort of binned me. And she was like, yeah, I'd fucking love to have you back. You mad, of course. Um, yeah. And uh, that, was when that was a couple of years ago and like, I still haven't booked a gig. Like, I audition regularly, like, I don't know why. I went for an audition the other week. I self-taped for, um, I'm not even sure if I should say what it is. Oh, it doesn't matter. I went for King Gary. Do you know the BBC thing, King Gary? Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but yeah. No. Comedy, yeah. Man, you know what? I, I, I smashed it out of the park, man. Like, I feel like I gave one of my best auditions ever. And I spent three fucking days with the script and the lines, and I was off book, and I made my decisions, and I had three costume changes for all three scenes. And I was reading with the missus and I filmed it and I filmed it and I lit it and I filmed it and I just cracked it, man. Like everything went perfect. It was comedy. I've always wanted to do more comedy. It was the part was perfect. It was for like this wanker, you know, and I was like, yes, I'm a wanker. This is awesome. And fucking nothing. Like, you don't hear anything back? Mm-hmm. Like I was like, I said to my agent, I was like, did you watch the tape? And she's like, yeah, of course. I was like, was it? Like, I'll be honest, was it okay? Was it right? She was like, honestly, I'm not even just saying this. I thought it was fucking awesome. She was like, mm. I loved it. I loved it. I was like, okay, so, all right. It, it's not like I suck and no one wants to tell me. Like, it was okay, fine. And you don't hear anything. And it's just like, fuck, that's that. Yeah. That, like another, that's, that's yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? Like, that's how's... the industry, yeah. man. That's yeah. like the industry. That's just it. Yeah. How do you deal with it? Like, what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Like, mm. seriously, dude. Like, what am I going to fucking what like what am I gonna do yeah nothing, there's nothing you can do like don't let it I don't let it I just don't you just brush it off and you let it mm-hmm. wash off your back and don't think about it like it's more painful when like people ask you like what you're up to than it is to be told that you didn't get a job like because mm-hmm. you have to sort of explain to people what you're doing and when people say anything in the pipeline uh I'm, I'm getting a new front door like, what the fuck am I going to say? Like, no, mm-hmm. nothing in the pipeline. Like, when the postman's asking me why I'm not on TV anymore, I'm just like, just deliver the fucking mail, guy. <laughs> okay? Like, oh, what yeah. the fuck? Like, you know, and I just was, yeah, but originally back to the original question why I was down, like, you know, I did this show and, like, I had my own, I mean, it's pretty obvious what the show is, but yeah, I had my own episode. I never had my own, like, episode where it was just sort of, like, about me and I was, like, the guy in the mm-hmm. episode. Man, and, and I was reviewed, and I think it got like five stars. The episode got five stars, man. I read the review, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so happy. This is awesome. And I got to the end of the epi- of the review, and it's like so many people's name was mentioned. Like, my name wasn't even written down in the review, and I was just like, wow. Man, it just broke my heart. Like, oh, uh, like, 
it's such a stupid thing and it's not important but it was just like the straw that broke the actor's back i was just like you know what fuck this yeah when you had uh, that my, door, my doorbell's going man dude oh. can i just put you on can i just yeah sure yeah right? go for it yeah it's fine one yeah. second one second Sorry, that's right, man. That's right. Was that the postman <laughs> that we were talking about? That wasn't the post. That was the Amazon guy. <laughs> oh, the Amazon. That one, yeah, the one that um, ever takes you on your bike, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't know, man. If like any of this actually makes sense. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, like, do you, did you find when you had that time out for a bit though that that helped? Was it burnout to some extent as well, or was it? Do you think it was more sort of depression or? I don't know, like, I don't really, like, I don't really speak about that stuff. I don't really come from a family where you, like, yeah. talk about your emotions and shit. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know, like, I was down. I was down because yeah. I wasn't doing very well. Um, yeah. And I, tra- yeah, I don't know, like, I could I could think about it now and just, like, get down about it. And, like, I want to be, I want to work again, man. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and I tried writing and that was great. I loved that, but, like, just couldn't finish the episode and, you know, and some obviously theater and things um, like I was going to do and then like just didn't really have the confidence to do them. And so I was just like finding reasons not to do like these plays because I just didn't feel confident in my ability. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Like, um, no, I've never really spoken about it before, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, then you see that. I don't even know why the fuck I'm speaking to you, like, just randomly, well, like. Well, but then you see that. But when you asked me to do a podcast, like, I was just like, why the fuck would anyone want to listen to what I have to say? Well, like, I just find it, you know, it could be interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, I know, for someone that's just obviously watched you to give that performance, you know, that intense storyline, seeing you on Strictly and seeing you in the public eye, you know, it's for me, it's interesting. Mm. See how you how you have been doing because you have yeah. had it come in, you know. I guess as a character as Dean, you've had that you know people rape pissed and all that commenting on things, and then you've had you know your personal life, like you say, even people going over to your granddad's house. You know that's yeah, it's crazy. It's it, people probably can't comprehend to having sort of that the stuff. Pe- the that stuff they thing. don't show you, yeah. The stuff that you don't see, yeah, is is mad about about that whole business like the 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 underbelly of it you know of the sort of it's got better now but back in the day with the sort of you know your dave reeds or your max clifford's or whatever like those Mm -hmm. people like you were warned about them Mm -hmm. as like a 17 year old you were warned about them like you were saying listen be careful of going here be careful of going there there's going to be people that are going to be doing this and and like yeah I think it's got better. I think I like to think it's got better, and mm-hmm. and I know that you know I know young people that have worked with me or ever with me and been put in those positions, horrible, you know, when those type of things. But you like to think that all this sort of people policing each other to a certain degree, whether you agree with it like a hundred percent or not, just like if everyone's being called out for absolutely everything, then. A lot of stuff's going to change, and that's good because the stuff that went in the past that the people got away with was, mm-hmm. yeah, crazy, man, right? Yeah. Crazy. It's weird, isn't it? It's, it's like it's all going back to all in the sort of Instagram world, I suppose. Like you see those people that have been like on Love Island and ended up like taking their own life. Like it's yeah. crazy. It, it, do you think that's p- partly because like people again they have that impression of if I'm famous I'll be happy and then when you're in love Island, that's precise so, that's precisely it's, that's yeah it's so it's, it you're, you're it's, so you're so massively famous in love Island, aren't you and then it then when it's over and the next series starts it's like you those people have been forgotten about almost it, it is that but there's also a different type of like like being famous for being an actor being famous for being a singer or being famous for being a dancer is you know your craft has made you well known mm-hmm. whereas if you were to go on love island or big brother or whatever this the, the show is like you're famous for being on that show and then there's there's always going to be a new 
Armada, a new Armada, a new sort of generation of people on, on that show, a new round of contestants or whatever. So that's why they refer to it as 15 minutes of fame because, you know, it doesn't last very long. And after that, once you've got used to that and you convince yourself that, yeah, this is my life and this is what I, I deserve. And like, I've got a profile that I need to keep up and I need to be wearing like the design of this or whatever, or, or being seen here. All of a sudden, like eventually people don't want you to go there anymore because they've seen you. And you can't afford to wear that or go there. And so I guess the depression slips in, right? Like, mm -hmm. because you were so besotted with the fame, like, or, or that, you were so focused on that. And it doesn't last. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and I guess for those types of people, they don't have anything to back it up. Like, there's no, nothing to, to fall back on, like, in terms of a craft. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't um, you know, solve everything. It doesn't, uh, that theory doesn't equate to everyone. You know, you've got incredibly talented people like, you know, like Caroline Flack that, mm -hmm. that weren't, you know, a reality TV. No, they were the fucking presenter of the show. And she had like money and a great life. And obviously was so sad that, the, you know, the, the, the whatever happened, but but even that was like, it's avoidable, like surely the, you know, everyone knows what one of the causes of that was. And that's the, the press yeah. and those papers and those magazines going after you. And, and she, all right, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Mm -hmm. um, but the whole thing with being arrested and the domestic abuse and, um, and you've got these, these Instagrams like, uh, accounts for like fathers for justice that, that are putting a picture of her up with the headline like she beats her husband disgusting she'd be in prison if she was a bloke lock her up now and and and, all, and that's like going after her aggressively coupled with the fact that it, the famous person breaks the law it is news I don't know. I don't. I mean, I'm not saying that I know why she did what she did. I fucking would never dream to. I'm just saying there's like all the shit things that were going on in her life, and and did any of them need to happen? Like, could they? Like, would that have helped keep her alive? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, if that one person didn't tweet that one thing about her, who knows? Yeah. Well, she even had it. People that, that... Even had it when she was on like the X Factor. She started dating Harry Styles, didn't she? And right. Because of, because of the age difference, it was like. Oh, All this is if, shit, if it like, was if it, she was a guy, you know, it'd be she'd be, you know, it was like, oh, oh, it was yeah. too much. It was like, it was yeah, for you're so a player. Long. You're a player if you if you if you sleep with with a few people as a guy, and you're a slut if you do it as a woman, and that's mm -hmm. not right, man. Like, like I'm, I knew Caroline like way, 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 way before that, and we weren't close friends by any means, but we had a couple of nights out, and she just seemed like. I mean, why would she not seem like a happy, bubbly, lovely, amazing person? But mm -hmm. I never saw. Uh, I just you just think that when it's someone that you you know, you can kind of see that someone being targeted, and then the result is what it is. And and even that, like, what's it changed? What's everyone tweeting and hashtagging? And I, I can't even remember what the hashtag was. Mm. Like, what was like justice for Caroline or something? You know. It, yeah, people jump kind, on the band, yeah, be like kind. be kind. Mm. People jump on the bandwagon for 24 hours, 48 hours, maybe even lucky three, four days. And then that's it. Then people just scroll past. No one stops to focus on what the problem was and let's get to the, like, mm -hmm. no one's doing anything about it. I, fuck, I don't know, man. I feel like this is the most depressing heavy podcast. <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we should, we should probably do. Uh, I don't know, man. I just, yeah. I feel like I've been like a soapbox as well, just give my opinions, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I don't seem to be a, an expert on anything. I'm just, these are just my ramblings of, mm. um, and just my opinions and they could be wrong and I'm fully like, not to be educated about anything that I am wrong about, which I often, often am, but I think you should have an opinion and I think you should, you know, have some conviction behind your opinion. And if you're wrong, you know, be grown enough to just be like, yeah, okay, I was wrong, and I want to, I want to learn why I was wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm constantly retweeting shit about Brexit and about how bad it was, 
and about what a fucking stupid idea it is and about how many people are losing are gonna lose their jobs or you know whether or not they blame it on covid in the end or they get away with it or the border and the irc or james o'brien just telling the truth year after year and people call like it fake news and project fear like i'm the, i'm retweeting that shit daily and i voted for brexit i was wrong i was completely fucking wrong mm -hmm. And I was even wrong worse than everyone else because I sort of did it as a social experiment, like really stupidly. I just thought, well, because people are pushed to a point where they just want it to change. Yeah. And so they'll vote for anything. That's why Trump I don't know. It. I didn't have exactly. Changed, and I didn't have yeah. a fucking clue about the European Union until after Brexit. And now I know about trade deals and WTO. <laughs> and yeah. Like it, like what? Like people just want things to change, and you're right. That is why they voted Trump, and that's why they voted for Boris again. Because, and that's why they'll probably vote Trump in, you know, 2024 or whatever the 2027 or whatever the date is. You yeah. know, they'll, they'll probably vote him again. It's different. Probably yeah. vote again <laughs> because, you know, it's been a week and Biden's dropping bombs on Syria, and like you know, <laughs> like it'll just go back to that Bush vibes. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a political commentator by any means. Yeah. But no, Bush yeah. vibes is. Me. I think I've heard Laura Kinsberg say Bush vibes before. Bush vibes. Yeah. Right. That's a, that's just a Bush one. vibes. <laughs> Senior or junior. Um, and people just want change, don't they? People are just mm -hmm. so sick and tired of the same shit year after year after year. And it was Brexit every day, wasn't it? Brexit is. Brexit's going to be great, and then you've got wankers like Jacob Reese Mogg. With a fucking mm. monocle telling you know telling you how to how great it's going to be when they are personally have millions invested in it failing mm -hmm. yeah no it's absolutely it's mad. mad like it's mad you think about it it's mad like it rishi, rishi sunak's wife's worth like 430 million and they're telling <laughs> us that they, they can't pay actors who aren't working any furlough? What? Mm, retrain, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> retrain. Your wife, yeah, yeah. Fatima should retrain from being a ballerina to an IT consultant. Yeah. Your wife's worth four hundred and thirty million. Don't just shut the fuck up. Don't tell me anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, should we? Should we talk football? <laughs> should we go on the? Um, I mean, I mean, is it is it much better? That's even more stuff, fucking. Well, I was going to say, is that? Is it, I guess that's, that. Yeah, I was going to say, is it is it more? Well, yeah, well, I'm Newcastle, so it's not much better for me. So we can't really win. But I mean, you're my you... second team growing up, Newcastle. Newcastle, not... yeah. And my best mate was a Geordie at school, Ryan Moore. It was a Geordie, and so Newcastle would be my my second team. Yeah, it was all... that, Newcastle and Shearer. Oh. Yeah, that was it. That's what got me hooked into Newcastle. Yeah, Edward, Edward support. Yeah, everyone supported Man United, and I was just like, I'll be different because Shearer's Newcastle. So yeah. yeah, and I got stuck. I'm an Arsenal fan, man. Yeah, I'm are you happy with just... Arteta? Do you think he's doing all right? Or <sighs> I thought that I might have wanted Jose mm -hmm. when Spurs got him. Yeah, um, because he's a big time, you know, big manager for a big Winner, club yeah. type vibe, and he's won. But after seeing what he did at United. And the way he went out of Chelsea, and now what he's doing at Spurs, like, yeah, I, I'm glad we didn't get Jose. And and don't get me wrong, Arteta's had his ups and downs, but there seems to be some sort of method there. And you know, with limited funds, I think he's doing sort of the best that he can. Mm -hmm. We're having yeah. an awful season. We're ninth, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like. We're not having a good season, but it's a project, you know. And um, look, man, it's just a game. It's become so important to us because there's nothing else on TV. I'm watching like, I'm watching like West Ham Burnley, and I'm watching full, <laughs> you know, the full then. ninety minutes. Like, I'm watching everything. Like, I'm watching the eight o'clock kickoff. I'm watching Wolves, Man City last night, I'm, and I yeah. wouldn't normally watch them. Why would I watch Wolves, Man City? I don't give a shit about either of those teams. Mm -hmm. But it's football and it's on TV and it's live and mm -hmm. so it has become really important. But um, but as an Arsenal fan, yeah, I'm I'm uh, let's see, give our terror a little bit longer. And more importantly, give him some money. We have someone that owns our club that, that hasn't spent a, like a pound, and the guy's mm -hmm. worth like God knows yeah. how many hundreds of, of billions. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, like that. Actually. Like I think, <laughs> I, yeah, well, he's worse. Well. <laughs>
I think um, this Nigerian businessman um, is going to is going to buy. It's going to try and buy Arsenal, and then like, I hope that happens. I hope we mm-hmm. become one of those clubs that gets a little bit of cash to throw around. Yeah, because um, I miss the glory days, man. I miss the glory days. I miss us like moaning about being in the Champions League. I want us back in the Champions League. Said Barcelona can thump us for hell again. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll at least get to a final. Yeah. Um, Have you seen um, yeah. Arsenal fan TV? Have you seen that stuff? I don't watch that anymore. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it. it's too, it's it, too cringe. It, it's too. It's a bit much, isn't it? It's, I mean, uh, as a, as a couple someone of Twitter that, profiles, I, I, I follow. Yeah, Arsenal fans. It's a bit. Sort of, it's yeah. it's, it's hard, hard to know what the, people. They're not. Yeah, it's hard to know what the they're not making millions of is. It. Yeah. No, because they're making money. Yeah. They've got a YouTube channel, man, and they're making mm-hmm. making loads of money from views, aren't they? So I mm-hmm. suppose they want to say the most controversial things. They want to say the stupidest shit because they want yeah. as many people as they can to watch because every time you watch, they get paid. Yeah. But I suppose mean, if they sat there and, and they spoke about, you know, it should Pepe play on the on the right wing or on the left wing, you know, because if he cuts inside the left wing, you know, he's got his left foot and he wants to... You know, they don't want to talk about facts and shit. They just want to be like, mm-hmm. oh, church shit and mm-hmm. uh, Pepe, 70 million, what a waste of money. And yeah. Fuck him. They don't, they, don't they don't want to talk stats and figures. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's I'm, sure Ty. They could. I'm sure they're really smart yeah. guys. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's Ty who's like, where's the Arsenal tracksuit guy? And he's just so positive all the time, no matter what. And he's, uh, yeah, he's brilliant to watch on Arsenal fun it TV. Sounds like, yeah, that's like a, a, such an Arsenal thing. Like, it's the hope that kills you, they say. Oh, yeah. But he it's just the won't hope have anything that kills bad. you with Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Like, always blaming the referee. Like, it's never, <laughs> it's always someone yeah. else's fault and calls players <laughs> cheats and all this. Uh, he's brilliant to watch. But, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's crazy. And this has actually been um, strangely, like, therapeutic. Great. Oh, well, I, I, I haven't given so. like, an interview <laughs> or, or in so many years like and people like ask oh, well, i just have this mentality of, of like if i'm not promoting something i don't it's like embarrassment of like you know what if i'm not doing really well then i just want to keep my head down and i want to stay out of the limelight or mm. i want to don't really want to speak to anyone but um i think yeah after the past year of like whatever yeah, it's been quite it's been quite nice speaking to you and like i yeah. just find it quite um Quite quite enjoyable. Um, I hope I didn't sound. I hope I don't sound like too opinionated on shit that I don't know about. Like, no, that's what podcasts are for, man. Just just to, oh really? Know, okay. Yeah, just kind of sprout yeah, whatever you know. Let you get it off your chest and reflecting. And sometimes it's good just to talk to someone. And just be like, yeah, things are a bit. Sh- things are fucked up, you know. <laughs> I just like other actors out there that maybe didn't like haven't cracked it yet or haven't made like real like enough to be able to sit by and stuff that are depressed about it and or that even like young guys that just have ever looked up to me or anything that just think it's all great like by having like money and stuff like it's not it doesn't make like if that can get that message across man i would just be i'll be stoked now because it's just about being content it's just about being present doesn't matter about what you make or what you buy or how much you're worth. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. Of course, who wouldn't want a nice car and a nice house? But it doesn't make you happy, man. And it sounds cliche, but fuck, there's nothing truer in the world. All that stuff does not make you happy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and just be appreciative of what you've got in life. That's what I've been doing for the last couple of years, if anyone wants to know. Yeah. Just being appreciative for what, I had, I, what I've been blessed to be given, man. Yeah. I believe the best yet. I'm watching come. Arsenal get their ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> could be worse. You could, you could be watching my team, so don't don't worry too much. I'd give anything to be night for ten. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, it's true. You see, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Appreciate what you have. Exactly. I'm sitting up in ninth, thinking, why aren't I in Champions League? <laughs> and you're down in 14th, thinking, we're, well, no, we're, we're going like, to stay yes. up this season. Yeah, we're looking over our backs. <laughs> see, there yeah. you are. Yeah. What a full circle of a conversation. There we go, man. <laughs> it's been great talking football, today. Football sums everything up. You can... Politics, sex, yeah. it whatever. Can bring everything. Football, there's a football analogy <laughs> for everything. It's Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah, man. It's been great talking man, today. This has been fun. Thanks for speaking yeah. to me, man. Uh, I believe the best is yet to come from you, man, and I'll be supporting you all the way, man. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate yes. that, man. And uh, hit me up. <laughs>